When I'm fishing myself, being able to forget about the rest of the world is the most incredible part of it. You're out in nature. You, you see many, many things. There's days that you see incredible things on the water. There he is, boys. You lose yourself in it, you develop a passion for the sport itself rather than just that mere act. Being in all that really is a, uh, is a remarkable experience. My first visit to North Carolina and the Outer Banks was in 1970. It was a very wild place at the time. One road, just a couple stores, a couple fishing piers, and it was very easy to fall in love with. As a, as a kid who was raised up primarily freshwater fishing, this was paradise. We have a pretty unique situation with the Outer Banks here. The Pamlico Sound itself is, is massive, it's 2.1 million surface acres of water. We have the tendency to uh, breeze up on occasion. You put that in the newspaper, I need a good man who has a truck, a boat, and can cook, you know, clean, you know, all that good stuff. Well, that's what I got. I met Gary at the hospital um, working. I was his boss and um, found out he did some part-time guiding. I hired him for a charter and the rest is history. But he charged me full price. <laughs> I was like, I don't even get a deal on a fishing trip? Well, you know, it wasn't until later until the love part came. So after that, she gets, after that, she gets all the free trips she wants. Every day to me is a puzzle. The passion for fishing can spill over to being on the water, the challenge of being on the water. There's never, never two days that are the same. And so every day you go out, you, you have to put the weather, the time of the year, the water conditions and your fish and your clients all into the mix and put that puzzle together to make that work for your client. And I, I love that challenge. Um, I, I enjoy that, I enjoy teaching. It's really cool when you help somebody and they catch many fish and they're having a good time. It's, it's contagious, that, that really adds to the day. Um, it also kind of, you know, it spills over into many other aspects of, of the sport. Gary is a chaotic disorder. It's chaotic, but he knows where everything is. And like his fly tying bench, you know, the shed where all the equipment's kept, is on the outside of the house as well, pretty much off limits. Don't touch, don't move. I've always been sort of a, 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 a gear guy. Either that or it's my OCD. And certainly having the ability to play with new toys. You know, it just makes you play more and the more you play, the more you find what you like and how that fits into your world. Come on, Daddy. Daddy didn't think I was gonna catch one today. I did. 
My wife is a fascinating personality. She can be very refined. Oh, That's not on the camera release, by the way. Oh, that wasn't on the camera release. You're supposed to do it gently. But she can be so country that there are times that I can't understand her dialect. Redneck it up a little bit. <laughs> With you, did you? Would you, did you? Would you, did you? Did you bring that with you? Did, did you? Did you? Would you? Would you? Did you? <laughs> it's my fault. Yeah. And how is it my fault? There's no fish in the spot. Can we go somewhere else? When me and Shelby met Gary, Shelby was like two and a half. She was catching puppy drum. Nice, like 14, 16 inch puppy drum at age three. He took me, but he took her too, and um, wanted to instill those outdoor things into her that I've always had and grew up with. He's been a very good a guide and a dad for her. To get somebody like my daughter on a great big giant redfish is really amazing, and it's it's um, I don't need video of it. It's the video plays in my head. You know, it's a. It's a memory that, that lasts forever. Everybody has their own passion. You know, you, you, find, you find something that you love, you can, you can do that. You, you know, if it makes you, if it gives you that feeling of feeling better about the world, then do it.